One man's trash is another man's treasure. I don't know if you've ever heard that saying before, but it's so true. I just went to a thrift store. Uh, it's, it's a it's a local store in our town, and I have a small town, like 3,600 people. And it's a, a store where people can come donate items. And all the profits, it's all volunteer. You know, it's a local thing. All the local faces are in there running it. A very nice little place. They keep it up nice. And it's very affordable. But people donate all their stuff that they don't need. It's a nonprofit. And so they take all the profits and then they donate it to other things in the community. Help other little, you know, startups, whatever. I was just there. And, you know, I thought, oh, I'll stop. Found a few things, you know, little, you know, forks. You know, my daughter likes little forks, you know. So I found a pack of those. I'm like, all right, cool. When I get to the book section, you know, my wife's going to kill me. Um, so I found a couple of books. I mean, the complete stories and poems of Edgar Allan Poe, hardback for a dollar. Uh, American Anthology of Literature, second edition after 1865, the post-war, post-bellum. Post 25 cents, and I had one of these. It's not thick. It's like the little paper leaves, you know, the thin, I don't know what you call them, though thin pieces of paper uh, see you get old you can't remember anything so you buy a book and you read it again even though you've read it once you got two copies of it anyway <sighs> there's so much knowledge in that 25 cent paperback book all of these writings from all of these great Americans and all these wonderful ideas for a quarter now in today's society, where we're at in our development or de-development, unenvelopment in our nation, nobody has any knowledge. Everybody thinks everything you know that's happening today is the only thing that's ever happened and nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. But it does matter. And because every see here's the thing. We're human beings, we've been through this all before. We've done this all before. We've made the same mistakes in the past. Nothing is new. We are not different. We are the same people, the same emotions, the same ideas, everything. We've been through this before. And so we can live vicariously through someone else's experiences. How do we do that? Hmm. We need a time machine so we can watch it go down? No, you got a book, you read the book. All the lessons are in the books. And if you read books, you'll learn all those lessons that people have made mistakes doing and you know, and they come out of it, they don't come out of it. So you don't make the same mistakes. So it's so important to know history. It's so important to know the writings of the past and what people went through because they're going through the same things we went through, we're going through now and are about to go through. But we can learn from them because we saw the outcome. And so instead of being afraid, instead of being knee-jerk and reacting and taking sides and all worried about what things, you know, how's this going to affect this and that, uh, uh, you know, all worried about it. You know what? People have already lived through this. People have already been through these circumstances. Yeah, the scenery's been changed, but you know what? It's the same play. You just got different backgrounds and different characters, but it's the same emotions, the same lessons. And that's why it's very important, and that's why I cannot help myself from buying a 25 cent book that has all of this knowledge in it. And then I bought a couple other ones, hardback books, you know, for a dollar. I mean, it's just absolutely unbelievable. The knowledge that is in that for a dollar. Okay, and then you go and you look at all the things you have to purchase, all the junk items, all the garbage items, the throwaway items that we have to purchase on a monthly basis. They have cost keeps going up on those. But the things of real value, they're getting cheaper or staying the same price. I mean, a dollar for a book. Oh, yeah, I got another dollar book. Brand new. Looked like it was never used, not even opened. It was a school textbook, literature, you know, teaching, you know, different genres and different, you know, techniques and writing techniques and had little clips of stories, you know, the kind of, you know, you take in junior high or in, you know, entry, you know, like freshman year of high school. You'd read through this thing. So basically, you can self-educate yourself. Self-educate yourself. Redundancy. You can self-educate. I mean, it baffles me and it blows my mind that 
There's so much knowledge. There's so many things of value and no one gives them value. They don't see a value in them. Just like cryptocurrency, just like Litecoin. I understand what the value of it is. Completely get it. And to me, it's a no brainer. I mean, it's just absolutely, it's, it's like walking, it's like walking down, you know, going on a hike and you see just a bunch of gold lying around. Yeah, you just pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, put it in your pocket, get it. It's just like these books, it's just like Litecoin, just like silver. Oh, here's a good one for you. Go to the bank and you can buy nickels. They come in $2 rolls. You can buy a $2 roll of nickels for $2. When you walk out of the bank, that $2 roll of nickels is worth $3. I think that's right. Is the nickels worth seven and a half cents right now in nickel and copper because of the copper and the nickel? Each nickel has 25% nickel and 75% copper. Every nickel, not you know, pre this date, that date, and you got to search through them. No, this is so easy. You walk into the bank, let's let's do ten dollars. All right, you give them a $10 bill, you're gonna get five rolls of nickels. And what is that worth? It's worth $15 when you walk out. Really? Yes, it's worth $15 when you walk out. Because the nickel is worth 50% more than the face value. Am I getting this right? Yeah. I mean, it's silly. A five cent piece is worth seven and a half cents in metal value. Now, rewind a little bit. Remember back, you don't remember back. All right, in 1964 in the United States, our government stopped minting after 1964. They stopped putting silver in the dimes and the quarters and the half dollars. Before that, it was 90% silver and I think a little bit of copper and maybe something else, maybe 10% copper, maybe a little bit of zinc. I'm not sure, whatever. It was 90% silver. So if you had a dime, it had 90% 90 90 of it was silver. Right now, that 1964 and before dime that you could have bought at 10 cents back then, and if you just saved it, what's it worth now? I haven't looked, but the price of silver is up. It's probably about 20, I don't have any, it's probably about $2 and let's say 25 cents. I don't know. Let's say $2. I don't want to overestimate. $2, probably more than that. It's not worth $2. Why is that dime worth $2? Well, because it happens to have 90% silver in it. And the actual silver content, if you were to go take it and sell it, and, and somebody wants silver, they're going to pay you $2 a dime. Now, how can that be? 20 times? 20 times since 1964, it's gone up? Now, you could have just, you know, said, eh, I don't care, whatever. Give me the 1965 dimes. You know, I'm not going to worry about it. Because back then, in 1965, when they're making the new dimes that didn't have the silver in it, there were still a lot of the 1964 and before dimes in circulation. A lot of them. Takes a while to get them out of circulation because that's all there were. You know, and then they bring the new junk in, you know, with hardly any metal value in it. You know, but most people are like, eh, no big deal. Eh, no big deal. Dime's a dime. But there were people back then who said, you know what, I'm going to go to the bank. And they knew it in 64 when they just had to they go get the rolls. Just go buy a roll of dimes. What is it, $5 for a roll of dimes? I don't know, 50 dimes in it. I'm not sure what it is. So they're plopping it down. They're walking out of the bank. Every dime has 90% silver in it. They don't even have to sort through it. They don't even have to sort through it. They could have spent $100 in freaking dimes back, back then and just just stuck it somewhere and forgotten about it. And you know what? Now it's worth, what, $2,000? $2,000. Because it's got silver in it. Sound money. It held its purchasing power. You know, that's what we talk about. Sound money holds purchasing power against the, the, the worthless dollar that they keep printing more of. So now you have the same opportunity. Let's rewind a little bit. Say you're in 1965, 66, and you realize, oh, shoot, you know, these dimes are actually worth something. You know, okay, you go to the bank and you get rolls of dimes. Well, you know what? There's more and more of the new dimes in there and fewer and fewer of the silver dimes. Because, you know, they're kind of working themselves out of circulation. The new ones are coming in. So you got to sort through every roll and you pick out the dimes. You pick out the dimes. All right, and take the other ones back. Maybe cash them in, you know, and get more dimes and go through more dime rolls. Whatever. 
Quarters, same way. Could have been the same way. Took them out in 64. I'm just using dines because it's simpler. So you can't add, subtract, and multiply. So now you have the same situation. Our coinage is basically junk. The penny has no copper in it. Very fractional, minimal amounts of copper, like 2.5% or something. The quarter has junk in it, zinc, you know, and just whatever. The nickel, however, the nickel, however, has not changed. The nickel still has 75% copper and 25% zinc. Or zinc. Nickel. Oh, Lord. And you know what? You're going to need nickel. I believe nickel is used in the hardening process for stainless steel. You know, it's a necessary component. Copper, you use that in everything. I mean, all kinds of wiring and just, just everything. So... If we get to a point where we're at war, in World War II, what they did with the nickels, they took the copper out and they put silver into it because they needed the copper for production. They needed it for bullets and all kinds of, you know, war-like things. What if we go to war again? What's going to happen? There's probably going to be a copper shortage or, you know, at least a high demand for it. You know, you're probably going to need nickel. So when you see this, and you realize, wait a minute, palladium's going up, gold's going up, silver's going up, all these useful, useful minerals and metals are going up. Now, Russia produces a lot of this stuff. And if Russia's off the market and can't trade, can't sell anything, what do you think's going to happen to the price? Something like gasoline. See how much that's going up. You've got an opportunity right now to where you can walk into the bank and you can walk out with 50% more value. When can you do that at a bank? When can you turn the tables on the bank? Well, now's a good time to turn the tables on these money changers, these banksters, den of vipers that they are. You're going to get ripped off with the mon monetary supply, the money. They're going to keep screwing you. You know what? Hey, here's an opportunity. You know what? Yeah, I need to get some nickels. Yeah, I got this slot machine at home. You know, this is the game that takes nickels at home. Whatever. 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 You don't even need to know. You walk into the freaking bank, you can get $100 worth of nickels, because I think that's what the case of nickels is. You know, $100 worth of nickels. You walk out of the bank, it's now $150 in your hand. Now, granted, the government has passed a law that says you can't melt them down, because they don't want anybody taking it and melting it down. But it doesn't matter. Nobody melted down the 1964 and before dimes. No, they kept them. They just set them aside and said, you know, someday these are going to be worth something. And their spouse looked at them and said, you're nuts. Why are you doing this? Well, guess what? Those people were proven right. They were just ahead of the game. But they saw what was coming over the horizon, and they said, wait a minute, all the sheep are going this way. I'm going to go this way. There are valuable assets out there that are basically being given away. Given away. And if you've got the, the understanding, which you all do, we all do, if you, if you, it's just putting the pieces together. If you have the understanding where things are going, then you can take advantage of those situations. One of those situations right now is the nickel. Go into the bank, you walk out with 50% more value. It's just a no-brainer. But, you know, you got to carry these nickels around. They're heavy and uh, this and that. But you know what? Is it worth it? Is a 50% increase worth it? 50%. You know, they used to say you buy a car and you drive it off the lot and you lose 20%. You know, whatever it is. Anymore, that's not the case. Used cars are as much as new cars. Silliness. Absolute silliness. But in this instance, you walk into the bank, you actually walk out with more than you walked in with. You're robbing the banks. <laughs> but, but... You know, at some point, they're going to change that. They're going to take that out. It's going to be just like the silver coming out of the coinage in 64. They're going to say, ah, you know what? Nickel's not going to have any nickel in it. Nickel's not going to have any copper in it. Maybe a little bit, but the rest of it's going to be uh, some other, you know, more plentiful metal. At some point, zinc's going to be worth more than the, you put it into the coin. That's put into the coin. Right now, it's it's not. But, I mean, at some point, it will. You know, aluminum, zinc, whatever it is, it'll be worth more because at least it's a metal. And it's not some garbage they print up and they keep printing and printing and printing and printing and pretty soon it's useless and worthless and costs just keep going up. Inflation, that's where we're at. I'm just trying to look at things that have value and I'm just trying to share that with you. Sorry it's so long-winded, but it's just something to think about. You need to think about, okay, 
yeah, we're really getting robbed at everything we have to buy. Well, there are some things out there that actually hold value. You know, if it gets to the point where it's too expensive to go anywhere and you can't go to the movie and you can't, you know, afford to go do the fun things you used to do, you know, a good book is pretty valuable. You can at least escape reality. What was it? Samuel Taylor Coleridge said, the and a romantic poet, the rhyme of the ancient mariner. He said, when you read, and it's like movies too, but he didn't have movies then. But when you read a book, you have to have the willing suspension of disbelief. You have to suspend your disbelief. Suspend your doubt. You have to willingly do that to participate, and you put yourself in an imaginary state. You take yourself to where that author is painting this picture. There's something very magical about that. It stimulates the brain in a much different way than, than all the garbage that we have now. All the video, you know, and all. Just, it's different. And it is the most undervalued thing out there right now, a book. But probably the most necessary for our human development. Find things of value. Litecoin, sound money for the digital age. I'm going to keep saying it and keep saying it. And you're going to look back and you're going to say, hey, you know what? He was right. He was right. Absolutely right. Should have bought more books. Should have bought more Litecoin. Road to hell is paved with unbought rolls of nickels. That's what you're going to be saying. I'll tell you what. I just want to help. That's all I want to do. I just want to help. I just want people to be lifted up. I just want you to make good decisions. I want to see you get things of value when, when they're telling you that it has no value. Listen to yourself and yeah, it does. It has value. I'm going to go to the bank and I'm going to get some nickels. I'm going to, I'm going to go get a book, you know, because at some point, you know, I might want to sit that down and it gives me peace. It makes me feel better. And I escape this madness, this, this narrative, this mockingbird projection garbage. I can just escape it. I let my mind go somewhere else because I don't need to be in this. I'm going to create my own reality. I'm going to buy some Litecoin because I know we're going into a digital world and I need sound money for the digital age. I'm going to buy some silver. It's cheap. I just want us all to win. I just want us all to win. All right. I love y'all. Hope you have a wonderful day. I really do.